stomach, the mixer and the digester. So the food from the mouth, it is passed to the stomach through the esophagus. So we have seen how the food traveled in the esophagus, how various systems coordinated for the passage of food in the esophagus. Now the food is to reach the stomach. So, so the stomach is a muscular organ in which the process of digestion takes place again in two uh, various aspects that is the uh, physical and chemical. Anyway, for the both physical and chemical changes, the process of churning is coordinated even by the nervous system or by the other gland system. Other systems also coordinated, coordinate the process. So here, when the food is in the mouth itself, when we are chewing it, the nerves present in the cheeks, the nerves present in the tongue, they will let the signals, information that the food is being passed to the stomach, this information is carried to the brain, then the brain it secretes hydrochloric acid, gastric juices in the stomach, which contain HCl. So HCl is poured into the stomach, we find the burning sensation sometimes, the acids are poured in the stomach. So this is for the chemical digestion of the food. So once the food is passed into the stomach through the sphincters here, the sphincter it relaxes, allows the food to pass down into the stomach. So inside the stomach, the food is mixed up with the gastric juices. Food is mixed up with the gastric juices. The food is made into a very soft porridge-like material called as chyme. Chyme. So do you think only the chemical digestion takes place or do you think only the chemical reaction takes place in the stomach? Not. Not only the chemical reaction, the physical churning also takes place. So how the physical churning takes place? We have seen how the food is passed in the esophagus by the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. Esophagus is made up of circular as well as longitudinal muscles. As the circular muscles contract and longitudinal muscles relax, this contraction is carried further. The alternate contraction and relaxation of these muscles will bring out a peristaltic movement which, allows, which make the food to pass down in the same way the peristaltic movements here in the stomach peristaltic movements again in the stomach makes the stomach walls to contract and relax. It makes the food to pass to different parts of the stomach well mixed up with the juices. So by that uh, the chemicals uh, they have more chance for the reaction with the food and the food is converted into simple uh, soft material called as chyme. So, once here we find the chemical as well as physical, again here for the physical, the muscles are to be coordinated. For the chemical, the juices are to be secreted from the brain. You see the part taken by the nervous system, how it is coordinating the events. So, once the chyme is prepared, the food that is partly digested, digestion of proteins take place here. But there are some more substances which are to be further digested. So for that reason, the food has to be sent to the intestines. So how is the food sent? So the digested food is sent down by the pyloric sphincter. Pyloric sphincter. Here we have a pyloric sphincter which is connected to the duodenum here. The place where the stomach is connected to the duodenum, there is a pyloric sphincter. Sphincters, just like a valve which do not allow the passes of materials in opposite direction. It allows only in one direction. Now the valve, the sphincter is closed. It allows the digested food down, but it will not allow the complete food down into the intestines. The food which is being digested is not completely at a time do not enter the intestines. It goes partly, part by part. How this is achieved? This is again by the nervous system gives signals to these muscles to contract in such a manner only a part of the food is released into the sphincter and remaining food is sent back. 
up into the stomach so in the top portion of the stomach you have solids which are not completely broken down here you have very fine material so the rigorous peristalsis the rigorous grinding takes place at the lower part of the stomach the food is made so fine paste in the lower part only some part is sent down the remaining is pushed up again for further grinding so extensive grinding is found here compared to here that is also achieved by the contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the stomach that is by the peristalsis so here we observe the peristaltic movements always making the food to pass down through the stomach so in this direction but here in certain circumstances we observe the peristaltic movements takes place in reverse way makes the food to pass up in the digestive tract sometimes in case of indigestion you may be vomiting in such cases the food reverses back through the stomach and through the esophagus into the mouth that is vomiting but it happens in a rare case it happens only when the food is not digested when you have some stomach upset only in such circumstances it takes place we observe that in animals ruminants like cow and buffalo you might have observed these animals they'll be bringing back the food the bolus cud into their mouth to uh, to chew it leisurely because when they go for grazing or when they eating the grass they swallow the grass without properly chewing so this food this improperly chewed food is not directly passing into the stomach the digestion part of the stomach it has got different parts chambers in its stomach it goes to a separate part in which there is no digestion takes place and the animal the cow or buffalo is able to bring back the food from that part into the mouth for leisurely chewing for complete mastication so after that the soft part is sent to that the other chamber of the stomach where the complete digestion takes place so in this way that we can observe the reverse direction of the food in the gut food canal so now let us uh, look at the other features of this stomach so here are the linings of the stomach it has a mucus lining let us see what is the role of this mucus lining so we have uh, learned that the stomach inside the stomach the juices are secreted the gastric juice the gastric juice which contains hcl so you know that hcl hydrochloric acid and we may think that okay the stomach it secretes only some dilute hcl no it's not depending upon the food to be digested it secretes very powerful acid the stomach do not secrete same quantity of gastric juices or acids for any kind of food the secretion is properly matched with the amount of the food in the stomach and the kind of the food so see that how it is coordinated if there is a very small quantity of food and the same amount the regular amount if it is having a specific value 0.5 liter 0.25 liter if that much of gastric juice with this concentrated hcl is secreted then the concentrated hcl will damage the walls of the stomach but it will not happen why because the secretions are sufficient to the quantity of the food that is passed into the stomach so if more quantity of food more juices less quantity of food less juices of course even though less quantity of juice it is hcl hydrochloric acid which have the capacity of melting down the bones even bones can be reacted to the hcl and made soft so then if it is having the capacity of melting the bones then how could this stomach is able to withstand that strong acid because of the lining the mucus lining inside the stomach it will prevent it is preventing the action of acids on the walls of the stomach so this we can better understand with an activity just take two leaves and apply grease over one leaf 
and no application of grease on the other leaf then put few drops of dilute acid on this leaf and this leaf let it be there for some time and observe you will find that on this leaf the leaf is damaged due to the action of acid and the leaf which is lined by grease there is no damage means the lining of the grease prevented the acid to react with the leaf in the same way inside the stomach mucus is secreted and this mucus here it acts like a grease how it acted on the leaf in the same manner it acts on the lining and it prevents the strong action of this hydrochloric acid on the walls of the stomach. 